Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 is the sequel to the widely popular Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, the virtual reality game featuring remakes of the original series and new levels all in VR. While Help Wanted was an in-universe VR game created by Fazbear Entertainment, Help Wanted 2 is an employee training simulator for the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. And, as always, something sinister is going on. Help Wanted 2 quickly became my favorite game in the series. Overall, it has a lot of good things going for it, but it has some flaws as well. I'll be discussing what I believe to be some of the strongest and weakest points of the game, so let's get to it. Let's start with the gameplay. While Help Wanted was more focused on horror, Help Wanted 2 is more about placing yourself in stressful situations, forcing you to properly manage time and resources, and there are still plenty of good scares mixed in. The new levels are really fun, and a couple of them have randomized tasks to add to replayability, which helps the game tremendously. The original Help Wanted was fun, but after the first couple of times playing through a level, it becomes somewhat repetitive. With Help Wanted 2, some levels have randomized objectives, so you always have to do things differently, making replayability very enjoyable. They take way too long to go over every single level in the game, but every Help Wanted 2 level is pretty good. There's some I like more than others, but I don't think there's a single bad Help Wanted 2 level. All 40 of them are enjoyable. Even the hard mode levels are good, instead of having retextured characters and funky lighting like the original Help Wanted. The new hard mode levels either have brand new gameplay additions, time to the story, or add a whole new character to the level, but more on that later. Overall, the hard mode levels have improved greatly since Help One, and a lot more to the game instead of just being filler levels. One level I do want to talk about is Princess Quest 4 from the game's ending. First of all, I absolutely love the Princess Quest arcades from Security Breach. They're a great set of minigames with beautiful pixel art and an amazing soundtrack, so it's great to have them back. In Help Wanted 2, the Princess Quest ending is executed incredibly well, starting with us simply playing the arcade as normal, but then taking a pretty shocking turn when the princess enters the room we're in. It's an amazing twist and just insanely cool. We then actually get to play through the Princess Quest Arcade in virtual reality, getting to see the familiar environments, characters, enemies, now all in VR. It's a pretty unique moment for the series and looks amazing. The sword combat, while pretty simple, is fun and the effects look great. The segment is also pretty visually interesting for the series, being a full 3D environment in a pixel art style. I'm glad Scott and Steel brought back the Princess Quest Arcades from Security Breach. The consistency with the rest of the series is something I just love about Help Wanted 2. The game feels and plays like a sequel to the original Help Wanted, bringing back a familiar gameplay style and Glitch Shop as the main villain, but also ties nicely with Security Breach and sets up Ruin. Help Wanted 2 mostly includes Security Breach levels, but some of its later levels also take place in the abandoned pizza plex before Ruin. We see the Ruined Daycare Attendant, the Ruined Daycare, Ruined DJ Music Man, and the Ruined Salon, where we try to fix Shattered Roxy and end up giving her the Security Node Mask from Ruin. The Foxy Log Ride from Ruin also has a full level in Help Wanted 2 that even connects to the AR world. On top of all that, in the normal ending we get to see the moment in Ruin where Cassie gets the Vanny Mask, setting off the chain of events that results in the Mimic being released. The Help Wanted 2 lobby itself is also Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, originally being the main location in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, and later ending up underneath the Pizza Plex in Security Breach, Tales from the Pizza Plex, and Ruin. This is a great way to tie all these stories together and connect back to the original games. I love when FNAF has consistency like this. My main issue with Security Breach was that it just hardly ever acknowledged Help Wanted outside of any short existence and the Princess Quest arcades. Then, Ruin started to acknowledge the series' previous entries more. It's a Security Breach sequel with multiple references to Help Wanted, and the main villain is revealed to be the Mimic from Tales from the Pizza Plex. This was a really nice way to tie all the new installments together. In Help Wanted 2, almost every entry of the newer storyline is acknowledged creating more connected and overarching story stretching across all of the newer games. That being said, like Help Wanted, this game's story is very bare bones. And it kind of feels a little bit like Security Breach where a lot of the story elements were cut, mainly Vanny's voice lines. Cut voice lines and the game's credits reveal that Vanny was originally going to talk to the player, giving them lore info and guiding them towards the Princess Quest 4 ending. This was seemingly replaced by Mystic Hippo's hints, which is a major downgrade. While the game's overarching story seems to have remained most of the same, it's not explained nearly as clearly to the player, and I think making Vanny a bigger part of the game would have just added so much more to the plot. From the sound of it, it would have been really interesting to have Vanny helping us out, and again, it would have just added a lot more to the barebone story. But instead, Mystic Hippo gives us some of the lore in a much more vague and confusing way. The idea of removing Vanny from the story is also just such a bizarre choice. You have the chance to bring back one of the most underutilized FNAF characters as a main character, and you just cut almost all of her content again? It's pretty frustrating to think that we could've just gotten more Vanny content if this wasn't cut, and I believe it would've made the story a lot better. I also want to make it clear this criticism isn't just me wanting to be rude. I love this series and its characters and I just want better. While on the topic of Vanny, I will say something great about this game is the Vanny Mask. First introduced in the Curse of Dreadbird ending, returning in Princess Quest 3, then becoming a major gameplay mechanic in Ruin. 
the Vanny Mask once again returns in Help Wanted 2, in a pretty creative way. After completing a certain amount of levels in Help Wanted 2, you unlock the Faz Wrench from Ruin, and you can use that to open the Pizza Place's storage, where there's an AR inhibitor and a Vanny Mask poster. After disabling the inhibitor, you can remove the Vanny Mask that's been stuck on your face, revealing the real world Pizza Place and giving the shocking realization that you've been trapped in the AR world throughout the whole game. This twist is amazingly executed. Since the very start of the game, you can hear the AR inhibitor in the lobby, and the Faz Wrench panels visible in the corner, already cueing the player that something else is going on here. And again, this is a pretty cool way to tie into Ruin's story. The mask is also pretty important in both endings. In the Help Trap ending, you witness Maskbot giving Cassie the mask in Ruin, and in Princess Quest, you give up the mask to get Glitch Trap. The Princess Quest ending itself is also pretty confusing. The main takeaway obviously is that Glitch Trap was killed, something heavily implied in Ruin, and in Help Wanted 2 it's revealed that he was killed by Vanny. However, it isn't quite clear yet if this is supposed to be Vanessa's dark side now stuck in the AR world, or Vanessa using the Vanny appearance against Glitch Trap. I will go easy on this ending, since it seems like one of those things that's left intentionally mysterious and will be answered later, but I will say it's a pretty shocking twist and I think it was executed well. A one of two's story in terms of clarity lies somewhere between Security Breach and Ruin. The story isn't outright clear and straightforward, but it also isn't incomprehensible. I prefer how Ruin tells its story. The story is pretty much clear by the end of the DLC, and it feels so much more satisfying from a storytelling perspective. When games have stories that just don't make sense, it takes away from their endings, leaving you lost and confused when the credits roll. Which is pretty much how I felt when Security Breach ended. Help Wanted 2 isn't a bad story by any means, I just prefer more clarity. But, as it stands, I believe Help Wanted 2 is a mostly comprehensible story, and a good conclusion to Glitch Trap. Unless Scott decides to reveal that the big ending where Glitch Trap is clearly killed is non-canon, but we'll deal with that if it ever happens. Speaking of Glitch Trap, I've always felt like Glitch Trap has been kind of an underutilized character. In Help Wanted, he kinda just stands there. And in Security Breach, he only physically appears in a not very good non-canon boss fight. However, Help Wanted 2 utilizes Glitch Trap much more. He stops you from progressing through the game, actively sabotages you in multiple levels, gives you the memories, and has a pretty big role in the hard mode Bonkabon level. Glitch Trap being an active character throughout the game makes him a lot more enjoyable. Instead of just being some background villain, he actively participates in the story and tries to stop the player. Glitch Trap is also very important in both the game's endings. In ending 1, it's implied he was responsible for giving Cassie the Vanny Mask and helping free the Mimic and Ruin. In ending 2, Glitch Trap is killed by his former servant, a fitting ending in my opinion. Glitch Trap having a much larger role in Help Wanted 2 was a great thing, makes him really feel like an actual villain. FNAF has been having a pretty good trend of villains, with Mexas being a constant threat throughout Ruin, and Glitch Trap getting a much bigger role in Help Wanted 2. I'm hoping the series keeps up this trend of active villains with the Mimic in the next mainline game. While we're on the topic of returning characters, similar to Help Wanted, something great about this game is you get to see older FNAF characters in VR. A couple of Help Wanted characters return like Glitch Trap, Dreadbear, and unfortunately, the Plush Babies. But most notably, the Security Breach and Sister Location cast makes a pretty big return, with most of the original characters from those games returning and a couple of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator characters as well. As stated earlier, a majority of the game is Security Breach themed, so you get minigames with beloved characters like Glamrock Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Roxanne Wolf, Sun, Moon, DJ Music Man, and more. But notably, one important character who's been in almost every new installment is weirdly absent from Help Wanted 2, Montgomery Gator. Montgomery Gator serves as a major antagonist in Security Breach, Ruin, a reoccurring character in Tales from the Pizzaplex, and the main villain in the story, The Monty Within. So, the lack of Monty in Help Wanted 2 feels pretty weird, and his only physical appearance is a model view on the stage. My only guess for his absence could be that they didn't want to bring Monty back so soon after his death in Ruin. But this is a prequel, it's not like it reversed the effects of his death. Regardless, all we can do is hope that Monty returns in the upcoming Help Wanted 2 DLC. The Sister Location cast also returns, mostly in VR remakes of the original game, which is great. The Laura Gallery is an amazing first level. It's a familiar minigame with some new twists. The mini arenas are now present in the gallery and you'll have to avoid bumping into them. It's a little confusing at first, but you'll get the hang of it. The minigame is pretty good overall. The Breaker Room is also a fantastic remake. It's pretty terrifying to see a Funtime Freddy get up close to you, and things get extra stressful when you're forced to put down your only defense against him. Yendo is also featured in the hard mode version of this level, which is great, I love seeing obscure characters returning. There are also multiple office levels where familiar characters return like Funtime Freddy, Ballora, Funtime Foxy, Ennard, Mini Renas, and the Biddy Babs. While I won't go into detail over most of these levels, there is one specific character who gets their own office level, that being Circus Baby, who has an amazingly stressful level where you have to fend off against the plush babies. There are multiple stages to this level, you have to find plush babies on the cameras, around the office, and last but not least, you have to play Red Light Green Light. Red Light Green Light is great, three plush babies will spawn around you, two of which are in your doorways and one in the vent in front of you. 
You have to keep focusing the flashlight between the three plush babies, stopping them from progressing any further. Strangely enough, Funtime Chica from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator also returns in the sister location office levels. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Funtime Chica is an underused character who isn't very popular, so it's great to see Steel Wool including her in the game. They're very clearly passionate about the series, and I love it when they include obscure characters. However, I don't exactly understand our mechanics of the game. First time I completed the level, I got the achievement for avoiding Chica collecting her cupcake, which I think was supposed to be the whole point of her mechanic. I'm kind of confused there, and I wish it was explained better. But regardless, I love her inclusion in the game. Speaking of obscure Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator characters, Pigpatch also returns in Help Wanted 2 for the first eight main games. While I love smaller characters getting a chance in the spotlight, it's a bizarre choice considering Molten Freddy or Scrap Trap are right there. Luckily, Lefty and Scrap Baby return in the last two first aid segments. There are great enemy choices and Scrap Baby works well as a final antagonist for these minigames. Her updated model with better withering looks great as well. Candy Cadet also returns in Help Wanted 2, being first introduced in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, later returning in Ultimate Custom Night, and then once more returning in Ruin to tell a story about the Mimic. In Help Wanted 2, Candy Cadet is found in the real world hub, and he tells two stories that likely have some sort of lore relevance. I love Candy Cadet's return. He's a great character, and as I stated before, it's a great bit of consistency with Ruin's story. Speaking of Ruin's story, much like Ruin, Help Wanted 2 ended with yet another cliffhanger, so it's only natural to be asking, what's next? Help Wanted 2 seemingly closes the Glitch Trap storyline of FNAF, and Ruin seems to be setting up the Mimic as the next main antagonist. But what will the next game's story be about? While upcoming games include Into the Pit, The Click Team, and Fanverse games, we aren't sure what the next main game will be, but a lot of people believe the Fall Fest will be important. Fall Fest was introduced in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC as a Halloween-themed festival in 1983. It was later referenced in Security Breach with the Corn Maze cutouts, and in Help Wanted 2 it makes a huge return. Fall Fest seemingly appears on multiple levels, such as Phaser Blast in the Carousel, there's artwork of it at the Prize Machine, and you can unlock a Fall Fest 1970 poster confirming that Fall Fest is an annual event that's been going on for a while. Fazbear Entertainment is also heavily tied to Fall Fest, featuring it in their VR game, AR training, and the Fall Fest artwork on the prize machine has Freddy and the gang. So we know Fazbear Entertainment has some connection to Fall Fest, either owning it or maybe collaborating with the event. Many people believe that all these Fall Fest references in Help Wanted 2 are building up to the carnival game mentioned in Ruins Files, and that that game will take place at one of the Fall Fest celebrations. Another thing to note is that in the Phaser Blast levels and the Carousel level, the Fall Fest burns down, possibly suggesting that at one point there was a fire at Fall Fest, which, interestingly enough, might tie into the Mimic. In the Tales from the Pizzaplex epilogues that take place before Security Breach, the Mimic arrives at the Pizzaplex, with most of his body strangely burnt, and we still don't know why this happens or what it means. The Fall Fest game might be a prequel game, possibly featuring the Mimic at Fall Fest and even using the Ruin mascot costumes. In the game, the Mimic could be burnt in the Fall Fest fire, explaining his appearance in the Tales from the Pizzaplex epilogues. I think this would be a great way to explain the Mimic's story and origins for the people who haven't read the books, and further build up the Mimic as an antagonist. But again, this is all just speculation. We'll have to see what happens. Help Wanted 2 seemingly has a DLC in the works as well, and it's possible that much like Curse of Dreadbear, this will set up the next stage in the series. Overall, Help Wanted 2 is a very solid entry in the series and, much like Ruin in the movie, has secured a strong return for FNAF after the mixed release of Security Breach. Thanks if you watched up to this point. This was my first time doing a game review like this, and I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did like this video, please consider donating to our Ko-Fi page. You can donate however much you want, or subscribe to membership for early access to our new animations, games, short stories, comics, and so much more. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Mimic is out there.